Well, <clears throat> I promised to give you samplings of the uh, varieties of words that make up Louisiana French and which reflect our multi-ethnic Euro, Afro, Latin, Caribbean, and Native American um, DNA, cultural DNA. So, right now, <clears throat> I'm going to show you a list, or go over a list, of these words that are unique to Louisiana lexicon. They tell their own remarkable story, their own history, ours. For example, <clears throat> when I was growing up, I heard there was an old man that my neighbors would refer to as Babiche Manuel. He obviously had come from a, a, a Franco-Spanish background, but his nickname, Babiche, was the only name uh, by which anyone knew him in our neighborhood. I often wondered what the meaning of Babiche could possibly be. It would only be much later when I studied the Choctaw, uh, elements of Choctaw language, that I discovered what Babiche's nickname really meant. It's very interesting. Babiche is Choctaw. It means or refers to a piece of old, dried, scrawny leather, and he fit that image fairly well. He was very scruffy. He had been a painter. He barely or not very well washed his hands, and he was always <clears throat> stained with paint, and, and he didn't practice the, the best level of hygiene. And he was very scruffy. So he looked like an old piece of dried, scrawny leather. It was often used also as a nickname for unkempt Creole Miti men. In North African Morocco, ironically, this word babish is known and has the same meaning. Additionally, a similar word, babouche, refers to leather sandals. We can see the, the connection with that. Here again, through the language content, we see international cross-cultural connections which bring us back to the French colonial empire, which united peoples from far and wide to the forgotten corridor of those brackish waters of what became New Orleans and the Gulf of Mexico. The Amerind, this Amerindian word exhibits apparent cross-cultural ties to North Africa. Then, of course, there was the, uh, the Choctaw and Muscogean family name for the city of New Orleans, long before it became La Nouvelle Orleans. Bulbancha was the name the Choctaw used for what we call New Orleans today. Bulbancha simply meant a place of many languages. This word, and many others, can be discovered in an old Choctaw dictionary. And I have to uh, acknowledge um, Dr. Darensberg, uh, who brought this word to my attention, and I'm very grateful for that, and the dictionary. You know, we see young people wearing styles of hair extensions and braiding today, and we think that's something novel or new. But in fact, in French colonial New Orleans, people wore wigs at that time. But even before then, across the Afro-Caribbean world, uh, people wore a cabres. A cabres is Louisiana Creole French. In Louisiana, it refers to a weave of horse hair for lassos and roping, traditionally given to the French couture de bois and their allies as a welcoming gift by the native, uh, by the Indians, by the Indians. <clears throat> In fact, it is of Grenadian origin. In Grenada, it is used as a metaphoric reference to light-skinned male or female uh, characters. Among older Caucasian and black Louisiana Creoles, it was used as a simile for elongated and woolen hair for mixed-race Creoles. Isn't that amazing? So whenever you see uh, some lady walking you know, in New Orleans with uh, multicolored braiding or hair extension, you can say, Ooh, voila, sa cabresse. There's her cabresse, her weave. Kalas, of course, was a Nigerian Nupi word for kara, and it refers to fried cake, which were rice dumplings. And the old uh, women of color in the French Quarter would sing that popular song, Calas Touchot, Calas Touchot. They would sell these to make money. 
we still make <clears throat> rice cakes in New Orleans, Kala. I love preparing these. They work wonderfully uh, with a variety of uh, meals as, or hors d'oeuvres or accompaniments. And you can even do more with that. We also do, um, we can use, um, we can use grits to, and prepare it in a similar way. And it's really quite delicious. Now, I indicated earlier that along with these words that, the words that the lexicon that has um, greatly <clears throat> infused Louisiana's colonial French and given it its distinctive air and character, there were words that were psychological, there were words having to do with products and things such as, of course, uh, and lifestyles, cabres with adornment, um, clothing, and uh, like the babiche, obviously, but then, and food, certainly. Chow Chow in Louisiana is a Creole relish. It was given as a Louisiana French designation, context, and ingredients of tomatoes, cucumber, peppers, and cabbage, which indicates that it was likely a shared gift of both Afro-Caribbean native, Mexican, and Germanic peoples. The etymology is unknown, but in Central and West Africa, it is a relish or pepper sauce that is served with meats and fish. According to my friend Dr. Ibrahim Asek, he believes that the etymology is from the word chou in French. Chou, chou, became chow chow. I find myself inclined to agreeing with him uh, because the French and, of course, their Creole Métis children have always tended to agglutinative sounds that gave meaning to words as nouns. <clears throat> It would be an Anglo-American uh, corruption of the French for hot, hot. Food historians have found chow chow cousins in India and all the way to China. Then, of course, there's the mystical and the spiritual in Louisiana. The mystical and the spiritual, things having to do with voodoo and the supernatural, konja. For example, I used to hear my grandfather, who was a traitor, Alikchi, talk about Konjan, my mother, uh, talked about these things. As a young man, when I first moved to the country, I uh, had purchased an old Creole plantation house, not the one that I currently live in, but one that was outside of town uh, and in the country. And it had a, a surprising collection of strange things in the family armoire. These old houses didn't have closets, they had armoires to store things. And uh, there was a Konja. Uh, a conja, of course, refers to conjure or hoodoo, and is of Franco-Caribbean and Louisiana French and Creole Métis origin. It is pervasive in Louisiana Creole Métis voodoo and hoodoo and folklore, and represents a hex uh, or bad luck put on someone. Or conversely, it can also be a charm placed in a house. You might call that a grigri are in the ground to protect against evil influences or intruders. And there, that's what I saw in the armoire. It was a shriveled up, very old chicken foot with human hair wrapped around it and something I could not identify, uh, all bound together with a ribbon. And the old lady that I consulted with, who was a relative who lived in on a dirt road not far from the house, I'd consult with her because of unusual spiritual phenomena that was going on in the house, uh, hauntings and noises. And she told me I had to find the conja and bury it. I did. And everything stopped. That was abnormal. I was accepted and there was no more bizarre walking and noises upstairs. There was no more shaking of the, the, the four-poster bed that I was sleeping in. It would wake me up in fright. The lights would go on and off. All that stopped. Can I explain it scientifically? Absolutely not. But I don't expect to. The mystical is real. Whether we accept it, acknowledge it, or not, it's real. There was a time when gravity and the Earth's shape were in question by those who were of the scientific mind, too. So I'm not moved by skepticism. I've been down that route. I'm too old to just deny what I don't understand that's a symptom of immaturity or a lack of life, life experience. So the conja, the term is related to the Afro-Caribbean spell 
conjuring an entrancing dance known as the Konjai. Our Creole Miti people apparently equate and or confuse Konja with Grigri. Unlike Voodoo, from which it has some origin, Hoodoo, African language and name of the Yui tribe in Tongo and Togo and Ghana, uh, is not a religion. It is a method of folk magic practiced that uh, developed during the time of slavery and blended with traditional folk magic of the people around at the time. The West African peoples, West African originated peoples, Europeans, Native Americans, and Carib Amerindians. An area settled by Chinese people imported to build railroads. Hoodoo practitioners adopted lucky rice and ancestor money. Then we get into the carnival aspect of all of that. Elements of Chinese folk magic and spirituality uh, enriched, or I should say, um, bloated that ancient and older tradition. Hoodoo is also referred to as conjure and is a type of traditional magic common to Africa and South American regions, carried to and elaborated in southern Louisiana. There's another thing, when we come to food, you know, the common assumption is that uh, today the popular political narrative is everything came from Africa. Well, rice, for example, is presupposed to have come from Africa to Louisiana, but that's only if we depend if we put our, our starting point uh, for discussing rice after a certain period uh, with the influx of African slaves and afterwards or African originated peoples. But the fact is that there's an earlier chapter that comes before the African originated peoples came to Louisiana and rice is part of that early chapter. In fact, Chupichul, which is Choctaw, it means river rice. <clears throat> River rice or wild rice was cultivated by the Choctaw and their Creole Métis children. Even in the country, at the end of fields, there would be a little pool of water that was dug, and this wild rice, Texana zizania and Texana aquatica, which is now being cultivated commercially, was always known in Louisiana, along with the uh, Choctaw gumbo, Comboliche, or Comboashish, filet gumbo. When, once the West Africans came, okra came, uh, Kala, and of course um, uh, the uh, rice that would ultimately be imported Carolina gold from Africa. <clears throat> I'm not trying to discount in any way the African contribution. It, it's there. But before it got here, the Native American, particularly in South Louisiana and Gulf South Louisiana, uh, which ran from Pensacola to Alabama, Mississippi, uh, Louisiana, and uh, Texas, Rice was already here, chupichul. Chupichul, as in the word chapatulas, which is the street in New Orleans, runs alongside the river, that means the river people. Chupichul means river rice, uh, or also called Indian rice. This is noted in Charles Duprat's famous and early 1718 history of Louisiana. It's also noted um, by a famous American native scholar, um, John, uh, I can't remember his last name right now. In any case, uh, he mentions this fact, and in fact he cites uh, Duprat's. Duprat's does make the distinction, interestingly enough, of the later African imported rice and the early Indian rice that was always here, along with grits, Sagami tea, anything having to do with corn, cornbread dressing, what's called dirty rice or rice dressing. We call it fach in French. Uh, these foods were already here. The use of tomatoes, these were New World products. Even something as simple as popcorn and, uh, and uh, sunflower seeds. A certain cooking methods, not only gumbo, but uh, some believe that even the Louisiana fish sauce that is mispronounced Cuvillon, after the Avoise family, uh, Creole family uh, surname, uh, was a gift of the Indians. The French call it Côte Bouillon. Louisiana Côte Bouillon is different from the French Côte Bouillon, as all of our foodways are. Our ancestors took the best of what they had from their 
progenitors, their earliest ancestors, and recreated it for their needs and according to the limitations and circumstances. It was a Creole food way, and the language reflects the multi-ethnic component of our ancestors and the diverse contributions that they would bring. Couscous is presumed logically to be something from Africa. Uh, but in fact, couscous is a Louisiana Afro-Creole Métis cereal uh, of grits, also known as sagamite. When we speak of couscous in Louisiana, we are using and mispronounced kush, kush, sleep, sleep, by those who don't know the language anymore. We're using a word, an African word, that was used by colonial, the colonial French to describe an indigenous food that was seen amongst the Louisiana Indians. It may also have been the term used by our first enslaved Africans to describe the food of Louisiana Indians reminiscent of the couscous of their former homelands. The Africans borrowed the term a couscous from the Arab couscous, K-U-S-K-U-S. Duprat described several cornmeal-based dishes by the indigenous peoples, one of which he specifically refers to as couscous. It was made using parched cornmeal served with broth, beans, griots, and shrimp. Louisiana couscous should not be confused with the African couscous, which is a very different meal in content and process, a semolina. So they're not the same thing. The French used the word that they thought was would convey what they were witnessing, something new that they'd never seen before, with the Amerindian foodways of couscous and sagamite, uh, and so many other things. We think of the mythology of Louisiana. We think of Lou Garou, the Indian werewolf. We think of Fufule, the crazy fire. In Louisiana, the super, it's a supernatural sighting, Fufule, and is derived from both the folklore and personal experience of indigenous peoples who, once they married with the African-originated peoples and had children, like the Creole Métis, these children had a new heritage, a new identity, and a new cultural heritage, a heritage of spirituality that was different from that of their ancestors, they had a mythology, a food ways, a new language, a new homeland. They were Creoles, Louisiana Creoles. No longer French, no longer African, no longer Acadian. We were something new, born in the colony, with unique circumstances. Fufule, Crazy Fire, of course, takes the form of a dancing ball of fire, according to some testimonials, including my grandfather's crashes and reveals sometimes an infant uh, in the midst of this ball of fire. It can be very frightening. It was very frightening to my grandfather. And it's been associated with worldwide folklore of the so-called will-o'-the-wisp. So some of these experiences, cultural experiences, you know, are shared worldwide uh, in, the, in the mystical realm. Empanada de carne, Spanish for meat pies. Meat pies are gifts of the are gifts of the Louisiana Texas Indians. Empanadas are also found across the former Spanish colonies. Argentina, for example, has the empanada de carne, which more closely resembles the Natchitoches meat pie, which is a direct gift of the uh, the Natchitoches Indians uh, that intermarried with the French uh, and and also during the Spanish period. Galimacha is a different word. It comes from very, very old French, Akitan, and often mistaken as Choctaw. Galimacha is of old French origin, and its etymology is likely Greek. It signifies words of disorder with no logic. Older Creole folks, for example, when cooking jambalaya in Louisiana, might use it to refer to a combination of foods or throwing together uh, in an illogical blending. A la preferan galimacha. She's making a galimacha throw together. Grigri, while though associated with African spiritualism, is actually etymologically 
from French giddy giddy, which means to heal, heal, or cure, cure. Its pronunciation and spelling appear to be a metathesis of the French giddy for the word cure. Its earliest origins are recording, recorded actually in 1755 and 65, and documented documentation found in West Africa as far back as 1557. It refers to an amulet, a charm, or fetish, such as what I saw in the armoire, and used for spiritual protection. Some scholars associated with juju presumed a derivative of French for a plaything or a doll, hence the voodoo dolls. A representation in voodoo of an individual. Our Creole Métis people apparently equate konja with grigri, along with herbal medicines, gumbo and shamanism, traiteurs, alichi, male and female, in Louisiana also are known as guérisseurs in France. And it's used with white magic. It's not intended to do bad or evil, although that component certainly exists. This is yet another remarkable cultural parallel between West African Aborigines and Amerindians of the Caribbean and Lower Louisiana, due in large part because of the Columbian exchange of the uh, 15th century, when first contact between enslaved Africans and Caribbeans and New World Amerindians occurred. There was massive cross-cultural exchanges. Things that are now viewed as African in origin uh, actually have New World origins or roots. The famous Lugaru, of course, French for a Creole Miti word for werewolf, is found in both Louisiana indigenous and Afro-Caribbean Creole folklore. Ouragan, we use for hurricane instead of the French tempest, is an accepted French form, but originates from the Spanish huracan, which is derived from the Arawak language of the Tainos Indians, which the first African slaves made contact with during the Colombian exchange and learned so many of the food ways that were brought back to Africa and later brought back to Louisiana and the Caribbean and just automatically assumed uh, is of, were, were of African origin. That's like assuming that Cajun uh, has, it was its own unique origin, when in fact there's no such thing as, as gumbo in Canada and the things that we associate with the Creole menu here in Louisiana. Cajun is simply a subgroup of Creole culture. The Africans, African slaves, would pick up these cultural traditions that, uh, from the Tainos Indians and bring them back to Africa, added to the menus and the choices that people had in those cultures and corners, just as the Europeans did in Italy with the tomato and other foods in Europe, such as the potato. French form patata was barred from Spanish patatas, the plural form of patata, which originates from the Tainos Indian noun, batata, or potato. There are many other words. In Louisiana, we like to say pecan. We uh, shriek when we hear someone from the Gulf South come to Louisiana. They say, oh, I would just love to have some of them pecan pralines. Yeah. Pecan and praline are a no-no in Louisiana. There are no pecans and there are no pralines. I have to tell the tourists that on the bus all the time. Pecan, pecan, just like we said in Louisiana, is Choctaw. We don't say pecan because we've inherited the correct pronunciation, pecan, it's Choctaw. We don't ask for pralines. Pralin is a Creole dessert candy of heavy cream, sugar, vanilla, pecans, and lots of butter, and more butter. And it was named for a French official of the court of France, Monsieur Pralin, Pralin, and so it's a short A, Praline. We'll forgive you if you don't get it right the first time. Then there's the mystical, Pizanta. The old people used to say when you get up scared to death that you saw something at the end, a shadowy figure in your room at night, or you felt like you were being suffocated and you woke up and you couldn't move and you couldn't say anything. Um, that was the experience with Pizan. The old people say Pizan. But it's actually of Spanish Cuban origin and it was spelled Pizanta. It, is, it was abbreviated in Louisiana, by Louisiana Creoles as Pizan. 
and refers to the incubus or the night demon that gives the effect of suffocation. Whenever that happens, the old people would say, Oh, chien, il faut aller dire des prières. Et on va bénir, bénir, faire bénir ta chambre. We're going to bless your room with holy water or a priest coming in. And, um, and of course, you have to say a litany of certain prayers. Ladies and gentlemen, that's just a small sampling of what you can find in my new book, Louisiana's Creole Culture. Uh, their words, their gifts, Louisiana's Creole food and culture. The uh, sister volume of this book is called Speaking in Tongues, Louisiana's Cajun and Creole Languages Tell Their Own Story, and it's our story. Uh, both of these books are available at Basin Street's Trolley Stop Bookstore, 501 Basin Street in New Orleans, uh, at the bookstore there. And also you can always... Uh, you can always order directly from me if you want to and pay by PayPal through my email, which I can provide privately through messaging. In any case, there's more to come. Let's talk about one more before I shut it down for now. This is going to be, of course, part six in the series of videos that I'm producing to educate our people and the world who wants to know the truth as opposed to fictions and stereotypes and political caricatures that have been built up over the years. P-Dog, we all know, is a dugout canoe that has been mentioned by the earliest uh, writers from Charlevoix to André Pénicaud, Bossu, and all of the great writers of Canadian and early Louisiana colonial French history. A dugout canoe that was made from a huge or smaller cypress logs, uh, and they're mentioned as easy transportation. The Coudre de Bois and... Uh, the, their Métis children would ride in these all the way from Quebec all the way down to here, here to South Louisiana and Mobile. Fruit such as plaquemine, that delicious persimmon, is actually, the, the word plaquemine is actually chalked on from which we have Plaquemine Parish, Plaquemine's Parish named in Louisiana. The persimmon fruit is eaten fresh and used in baking breads. It's great with ice cream. It's a natural remedy for diarrhea. <laughs> I've got to finish having my tea. I'll continue with more of this. I hope you're enjoying it. I was a teacher for 25 years. I delight in sharing this every day with people from all over the world on the bus. And I'm glad to share it with y'all. Hey, have a bon weekend.